1995 Harley Davidson bad boy. Lowered front and rear, 23 inch front wheel, but with the stock 16 inch rear solid disc wheel. All right, I've said it a bunch of times. I'm gonna say it again right now. A good custom bike is never really done. You're always doing little things to it. No matter how perfect you think it is, you always find little things that you think could be changed a little bit. It might make a little bit of a difference. So my 1995 Harley Davidson Bad Boy, one of my favorite bikes I've ever owned. Definitely the best Harley Davidson I've ever owned. Uh, I've got a 23 inch black front wheel on it. Some people don't like it, but I really love it. I love the way it looks. I love the way it handles. I love the way the big wheel fills up the Springer on the front of the bike like a 21 does on an early Springer, which is shorter. So anyhow, I got a build it back wheel. It's 18 inches. And what I like about this is the 18 inch wheel is bigger than the 16 that's on the bike now. Uh, two things. One, the 16 that's on it is the original Harley Bad Boy disc wheel, which catches a lot of wind, crosswind on the highway. And when you pass a big truck, the big truck sucks you in and pulls against that disc and tries to pull you into it. And then as you pass that truck, it pushes you away toward the out, outside of the lane. So a mag wheel like this that's open will allow the air to pass through a lot better and not make that happen. The second thing is it's 18 inches. The original wheel is 16 inches. So this rim is going to look like it's up further into the fender, which is going to make the bike seem like it's lower in the back. Uh, of course, uh, a lighter tire, uh, lighter rim all the way around, so it should make it handle better. Found a good used 11 and a half inch brake rotor to put on it and a good billet aluminum pulley. Pulley doesn't really match, but this wheel's for a bagger. It's for an you know, ultra classic road king, uh, street glide, road glide. It's not made for the soft tail I have which is a 95 Evo, which is made for a twin cam and later. So I have to do a bunch of modifications to make it work. You know, um, seldom does anything ever just bolt right onto a bike, especially a good custom. And in this case, it's almost everything. I already had to do some machine work to get the brake rotor to mount, had to do some machine work to get the belt pulley to mount, but that's all together. And now what I have to do is uh, put the performance machine brake caliper on it. And something else I'm really excited about and getting ready to show you. Yeah, this is what I was really excited to show you. Not really sure how many of you were around in the 90s building custom bikes or customizing Harleys, but this was a big deal around the mid 90s, I think when they came out. I think it was 94, 95, maybe 93. I don't quite recall, I'm gonna have to ask Jesse. But this is a Boyd Coddington bill of aluminum swing arm for Harley Davidson soft tail. You know, Boyd Coddington was building custom cars uh, Started making parts for Harleys and made rocker boxes for Evo engines, a lot of wheels and brake rotors, and these billet swing arms and a few other small pieces. But um, in Miami, where we were growing up and building custom bikes for all the guys that had money, everybody had to have Boyd's wheels, the Boyd swing arm, anything Bo Boyd's made. I think it was called Billet by Boyd back then. And anybody, they, anything they made, these guys had to have it. And I couldn't afford any of this stuff. I couldn't even afford soft tail. I was riding a rigid panhead because that's all I could afford back then. But um, really, really cool part. This one could use a little light polish, which I'm gonna go ahead and do to it. But you know, when I put this on the bike, I can't just use a stock brake rotor. I can't use a stock back wheel. This stuff will work, but it's not gonna look good because it's such a high-end piece. So I got a PM performance machine. It's actually a new PM rear brake caliper, but it's missing parts. It's missing the pads and missing the pins that hold the pads in, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and make those parts because I can't find them anywhere. I was trying to buy them online. Tried a bunch of things, you know, you can't talk to anybody on the phone anymore, and you know, nobody wants to work, so I have to make some parts for this, so I'm gonna make the parts for this. I'm gonna set up the axle. The, the axle for the Boyd swing arm is missing, so I'm gonna have to make that. Uh, the axle covers are missing, but I have to make those. That's a whole nother thing. I'm gonna get this on the bike without the covers and make those. But I'm gonna put that billet wheel on the back, um, get the brake on it, get the whole swing arm set up as a unit. Then I'm gonna remove the stock parts that are on my 1995 Harley Davidson bad boy, slide this sucker in and be pretty happy on the ride home. Jesse James used to work for Boyd Coddington in California, and so he was probably in the shop making this kind of stuff, you know, before he was really well known as a customizer. He was always doing custom work, but before he was really well known, he was working at Boyd's, so I'm gonna reach out to him and see if he knows exactly when these came out, but um, something I've always wanted, um, I think they were about three grand when new when they came out in the early, mid-90s, and that was a lot of money. Um, so anyhow, I've got one, I'm gonna get it in my bike, and I'm gonna show you how I put it in. Okay, so first things first, I've got the chrome 
build a limited performance machine, four piston brake caliper. This is a differential bore caliper, so the smaller bore piston actually closes first and gives you a good leading edge bite on the rotor. It's supposed to give you better braking power. You know, it's racing technology, but they're translating it to custom street application. But this thing is missing the pads, so I bought a set of pads for it. But it's also missing the pins that hold the pads in. So there's a couple ways I can do this. I can make the pins, I can modify something that goes in it, or I can you know, do what I do, which is just get stuff and make it work. So I had these long grade eight bolts. I can shorten these bolts and make them work. I'm gonna use these grade eight bolts as my brake pad retaining pins. So you can see they're too long, I gotta cut them down. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure them and cut them down. I'm gonna drill them for a cotter pin so that they won't back out of the bore through vibration and brake pressure. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and lightly address the end of these pins on the belt sander. Pins drop in like that, hold the brake pads in. Then to keep the pins from migrating back out toward the inside of the caliper. Now I have to drill holes in the pins so I can use cotter keys to retain them. All right, using a small center drill, I go ahead and spot this pin for my drill bit. If I don't spot it, my skinny little drill bit's gonna wanna walk all over the radius of this surface of this pin, so I go ahead and spot it that way. The bit only has one way to go, which is through. Here's my brake pad retaining pin. You see I drilled a hole in it for the cotter key to go through to hold it in. And it goes into the caliper. You can see my hole there where my cotter key's gonna go in and it won't let that pin migrate out as the pads move back and forth. Now I slide the pads in. Drop in my pins. Now I just gotta put the cutter keys in there so that they can't walk out. All right, so there's my brake pads set up with the pins I made out of the grade eight bolts and a set of cutter keys. So now I'm pretty close to being able to get this thing lined up. A few more little issues I gotta work on, but I'm gonna get this whole rig set up in the swing arm. This is the axle I'm gonna use. This is a wide tire axle, like 13 inch long from a wide tire rigid frame from back in the old early 2000s days. But what I did was I used it as a depth gauge and I marked my depth of how deep I need to go for my axle sleeve. Cause this wheel has seal bearings for a one inch axle. Like the 1995 Harley Davidson has a three quarter inch axle. You can see the axle's got a real sloppy fit in the wheel, so I'm gonna machine a sleeve out of a piece of one inch mild steel frame tubing. And I just need to cut that tubing a little bit shorter than the width of the surfaces of these two seal bearings so that it can float in there and not be pushing out against my wheel bearing spacers. So this is my one inch mild steel frame tubing that I'm gonna use for my axle sleeve. I did this on the front wheel on the bad boy a few months back. If you wanna go back and watch that video, but I'll, I'll go ahead and shoot some more video of it doing this here. It's a real quick operation, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down a little bit. It's one inch tubing, but it's not perfectly round and it's not exactly one inch, it's oversized. So I'm gonna cut it down so that it is perfectly round and exactly one inch to fit in those bearings. Just taking a real light skim cut off of that just to make it perfectly round and get some of that foundry scale off of there and some of the high spots when it was extruded. There's a section of the one inch steel tubing that I turned down to be my axle sleeve. You can see where my cut mark started right there. I'm gonna cut it off just short of that mark and I've got my sleeve done. I can go ahead and mock this axle up and start making my axle spacers and get the wheel set up in the swing arm. My axle moves freely inside the one inch steel tubing. So that's gonna take my three quarter inch axle to the one inch diameter for the wheel bearing. And then go ahead and drop that in. I'm able to put a three quarter inch axle in a wheel that's made with a one inch wheel bearing for a later model motorcycle. And I think my point in showing you this is, you don't have to buy something that says, it's specifically made for a 1995 Harley Davidson bad boy. My attitude's always been, I like this part. Maybe it's not made for the motorcycle I have, but I'm gonna make it fit with the tools that I have and the knowledge that I have. And you can see this is a pretty sweet little setup here. Um, what I gotta do now is make the axle spacer for the inside that when I torque the axle down, so that my brake rotor right centered in the caliper. But I'll show you how I do that on the lathe as well. Pretty simple system I use, but works real good. 
I'm going to show you next how I set up the axle spacers for the wheel and the swing arm so that I get everything right. Now there's a spacer that needs to go in here between the wheel bearing and the brake caliper bracket. I don't know how thick that spacer needs to be, but I have a spacer that's roughly in the range of where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And what I do is I take an axle and I run the axle down through the middle of the whole rig here. And I'll stand this up on the other side so you can see what I'm doing. And I got the axle coming through. Then I'll just put a couple spacers on the other side and I'll put an axle nut on it. When I tighten the nut down, it's going to basically simulate what the whole assembly would be like in the bike. Pulling the axle down tight against the spacers. Let me spin this around here for you. You can see better. Now, you can see my, my brake caliper rolls freely. You know when it's on the bike, the bracket will stay still and the wheel will roll. But right now I've got this caliper spinning freely. And what I'm going to do is check to see how the caliper is centered in the wheel. So what I'm looking to see is that the center line of the brake rotor is in line with the center line of the brake caliper. And if it is, my spacing's right. If it's not, I'm going to have to cut it. But as this turns out, this is perfectly centered. So I don't have to cut that spacer at all. But using the dummy axle in the whole assembly in the wheel makes it easy for me to figure it out off the bike because once you get on the bike, everything's in your way and it's really hard to figure out. It's easy to make a mistake. Doing it here on the workbench makes it a lot easier. And, uh, you know, it's just the way I've always done it. I always set up everything on the bench first and when I put it on the bike, I know it's going to be right. <clears throat> Two last things I really need to do before I can go ahead and get this whole swing arm and wheel assembly up in the 1995 Harley-Davidson Bad Boy is get the axle cut made and get the left side wheel spacer made and I need the axle to really make the left side wheel spacer so I'm going to go ahead and dump this metal yardstick down in here basically telling me I need about 11 inch 10 and 3 quarter to 11 inch long axle for this bike the axle I've been using as a dummy is 15 and a half inches long I can cut that down and use it I'm going to look in my stash of axles and see what I have that might be more appropriately length for this so if I don't find something I'm going to go ahead and cut this one and make it and either way I'll show you what I do ready to put the wheel and the brake bracket inside the swing arm. I'm gonna roll this swing, this forward for a second. Bring the wheel up here and show you how I keep this off from falling out. When I go to put this wheel assembly in the swing arm, everything wants to fall due to gravity like that. And you wind up trying to hold everything together. What I always do is I take a long punch and I shove that punch in the, ax, in the axle bore and just kind of use it to hold everything together. up in the swing arm with the whole assembly off the bike turned out to be the right move for sure because this right side spacer on the wheel that holds the brake rotor sticks out way too far past the edge of the wheel for this whole assembly to fit inside the swing arm as i told you earlier this wheel is off of a bagger it's not made for the harley davidson soft tail so the whole swing arm the whole rear assembly is different the dimensions are different everything's different so um, I'm having to modify a lot of things. So what I found is through measuring is that this spacer is 800 thousandths of an inch too wide, which is a little over three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch is 750 thousandths. This is 800 thousandths of an inch too wide. So I'm going to go ahead and take 800 thousandths of an inch off of this part. And that should allow me to fit everything inside the swing arm the way it needs to go. And while I'm doing that, this is the center wheel bearing spacer that rides down in the middle here. If I take 800 thousandths off of this, I need to take exactly 800 thousandths off of this, then it'll give me the right bearing preload when I reassemble the whole rig. So I'm gonna go ahead and chuck this up in the lathe. I'm gonna take 800 thousandths of an inch off of it and show you how you don't let anything stand between the way of you and your goals. Let me show you how I very quickly cut my 800 thousandths off of this wheel hub. So I bring my cutting tool up to the edge of the wheel hub till it stops. 
and that's going to be my zero point. And then I'm going to cut this way, traveling in toward the chuck, 800 thousandths of an inch. And I have a stop right here, and I can move this stop. If I lock this stop down right here, I get zero cut, and nothing will happen. But if I move this back and give myself 800 thousandths of an inch gap, which I'm going to go ahead and find on my caliper right now, that's 800 thousandths. I'm going to come in here and set 800 thousandths gap between my carriage and my stop. Now I know I'm exactly cutting 800 thousandths of an inch off of the part. So, you know, a CNC machine will do this by computer calculation. I go ahead and do it using a veneer caliper and some good old analog thinking. Right, now you see as I pull my tool back away from the part, my carriage has the range to roll 800 thousandths of an inch down. If I measure down from the outside of the edge of the veneer caliper, I'm taking 800 thousandths off right from the edge to the edge of the tool bit. So everything works out. But just so you can see how simply I do this. Let me walk you through a cut. So I've got my part in the lathe. I've got my 800 thousandths stop set. I've got my screw running to move my carriage automatically. So I'm cutting 30 thousandths of an inch at a time. So I go 10, 20, 30. I pull the clutch on my carriage and there it goes. Making baby slinkies. Now as my carriage starts to approach the stop, see that gap closing out. I'll stop it. Finish the cut by hand. Back the carriage out. Come in another 30 thousandths. Make another cut. Here's my wheel hub with the 800 thousandths I cut off of it. Now there's a little bit of a centering locator that's gonna be raised up here that's gonna center the hub in the wheel itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did when I was surfacing the hub. I'm gonna to go to the end of the locator and then set, let me move some of these chips back. These chips are all what that hub used to be. I'll now turn into little pieces of chip. Now I'm gonna set 100 thousandths up here Cut back again, and then I'll have my indicator done, and I'm ready to cut the bearing spacer and put this sucker back together. I'm also cutting 800 thousandths of an inch off my wheel bearing spacer that goes down the middle of the hub, correspondingly to the 800 thousandths of an inch that I took off of the hub itself. The brake rotor was 800 thousandths of an inch, which is almost a full inch, over three quarters of an inch, up off of the center line of the wheel. I cut that down and moved it down. That's going to allow this to all fit in the swing arm. I've got the pulley bolted on the other side. I've got the wheel bearing sleeve to reduce it from one inch axle to three quarter inch axle for the soft tail. Now I'm ready to set this thing back up and try and get it in that swing arm, get all the spacing done. Then I can slide the whole assembly into the bike. Okay, first step to get this assembly in the bike is I'm going to get the brake caliper on, put my inner spacer between the caliper and the wheel bearing, and I go ahead and put my short punch in there just to hold everything together. That keeps my brake from falling out due to gravity. I'm going to rock this swing arm back. Everything should start to really kind of line up for me here. I'm going to slide this bigger punch through, which gives me a better simulation of the axle diameter. Knock the other punch out the other side, right? And that gives me room to go ahead and, and get this other spacer in the other side. All right, here's the whole assembly. I don't have the axle in yet, but I have to cut the axle and make that all work. I'm going to do that next, but you can see I've got the swing arm all together. I've got the brake 
lined up to the brake rotor, all the axle spacers made, the axle sleeve made, the hub cut down, the bearing spacer cut down. Everything I had to do was a lot of work. This was not a bolt together job by any means. Without a lathe, I couldn't have done this. Um, and a good measuring tools and a lot of experience had been hard to do, but I got it all done. Um, pretty excited about it. I'm gonna get the axle cut and then I'm gonna go ahead and polish up the swing arm just by hand. Um, somebody has tried to polish it years ago. That's why all this white dust is. It's dried up polish and never polished off. So I'm gonna clean it, try to give it a good hand polish. I don't need to give it a show polish because on my bike, it's just gonna get dirty and get used anyway. I'll make this look great and I'll be ready to put it in the bike. All right, that punch in there makes it so nice for me to come back through. Now there's my real axle. Drive it through as I drive it through, it pushes the punch out the other side. And bam, I'm in there. Use brake cleaner to go ahead and get all this old polish out of it because it's all dried up and hard in all these little grooves, making it look white and frosty. Once I get that all out of there, I can go back and polish it with some new polish and make it look good. I got a good hand polish on the swing arm. I'm going to go ahead and take all these bolts out that hold it together. <laughs> put thread locker on everything so it doesn't try and come apart on me while I'm riding it. I don't know if you guys have seen these. The HMC lifts are pretty cool. They got casters on them, so you can actually move the lift around in the shop. People always ask me what I'm using in the shop, so I thought I'd show you. Uh, these things are pretty good. Made in USA. HMC Industries SL 3086 Airlift. I love mine. I have several of them. Use them in the shop all the time. I had the bad boy up on it. I'm not working on the floor like I was in the old days. When I wanted this bike in 1995, I couldn't afford it, and I was working on the floor. So let's tackle this rear swing arm and stock rear wheel, get it out of there, get the Boyd Coddington swing arm and billet wheel in it, and turn this thing into a real superstar. All right, first order of business, I'm gonna remove the exhaust pipe because it's gonna be in my way. I'm gonna get that off the bike. I'm gonna jack it up, get the back wheel out of it, get the swing arm off of it, and start putting the new parts in. I'm hoping this happens pretty quick. Real excited about this. My first step after I get the pipes off is get these shocks released from the swing arm. Um, so I'm doing that now. It's, this is kind of uh, slow going, you know, it's one, you know, it's one sixth of a turn at a time under here. There's no room to do anything. I got a little stubby wrench and um, just under here. This is uh, one of the, those jobs. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. There's not a lot of room to get in here. Harley Davidson has always been good at that, putting stuff in a really inaccessible place. Uh, this is probably the prime example of that. I'm getting it almost done. Then I can jack this up, get this wheel out from under here, get the brake off of it, and start pulling the swing arm out. Um, I want to put a six speed in this. I have a six speed gearbox for it. I've been meaning to do it for about eight months. I've got the gearbox here. Now would be the perfect time to do it. But I'm so pressed for time. We got Sturgis coming up, a lot of other stuff going on. I just don't see me finding the time to do it. So uh, I'm gonna get the swing arm in and I'll do the six speed another, another day. I see now as I jack this up, that swing arm gonna drop without any kind of restriction on it. And I can pop the axle out and get the wheel out. That's about stock ride height right there. You can see how much I had it lower. Pull my caliper pins out and get the caliper out of the way, the wheel comes out pretty easy. It's pretty hard to get everything in here. The belt's pretty wide, the belt guard's still on it. Once you get this out of the way, 
make th makes things quite a bit easier. All right, got that out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and bust these swing arm pivot bolts out with that West Coast Choppers Impact. There she is. There's the swing arm out of the bike. Gotta go ahead and pull this belt guard off real quick just to get the belt through. The belt's gonna stay in the bike, but uh, I'll go ahead and pull that off, get the entire swing out of the bike, and then I'm ready to start putting my new parts in. So stoked about this, I can't even tell you. I think I might have mentioned this earlier, seldom is anything easy in the world of custom motorcycles. So this is the swing arm pivot bolt. It's three quarter inch, and you can see it fits through the, through the bearing in the swing arm, and it fits in the stock Harley Davidson swing arm pivot axle just fine. But the aluminum axle that came with the Boyd's arm it does not fit it does not fit it's too big they had this for some reason set up for a 5 8 bolt instead of a 3 quarter inch bolt so as i say you always have to modify something this is going in the lathe i'm going to bore it out and tap it to that 3 quarter inch bolt so i can utilize everything the way i need to use it I go ahead and run this tap in. It's real easy to hold the part in the lathe chuck because it's got a great grip. It's got a better grip for a round part than anything I have in the shop. So I just go ahead and hold it in there, run my big tap in this end, and I flip it around and drill the other end and run the tap in the other end. I'm using cutting fluid on the tap to help me get a nice clean cut. Got my West Coast choppers, Jesse James. Uh, Crescent wrench, man, I got a, you know, a whole tool set. Um, we had a bunch of stuff when I did Monster Garage, and then this has always been a fan of Jesse's work and West Coast choppers in general, um, especially in the 90s, you know? They were doing stuff that was really cool. They were doing cool stuff on the West Coast, and I was doing the cool stuff on the East Coast, me and Indy and Larry, and a couple other guys. And uh, so, you know, I'm supporting what's out there, man. Just supporting what's out there. In the back of my tap out, I just run my lathe in reverse. Go ahead and clear that threaded bore with some compressed air. And do the other end. This is a stock Harley Davidson black soft tail swing arm with the bad boy 16 inch chrome rear wheel, the bad boy floating disc rotor, which is you know exclusive to that model for 1995 for the bad boy. And here next to it is the Boyd Coddington billet aluminum swing arm, the performance machine brake, billet aluminum anodized black wheel, 18 inches instead of 16 inches. It's a big difference between the two. Compare them side by side. The 18 inch wheel is a little taller, which I'm gonna like. Um, it's gonna fill up the fender in the rear of the bike more, make it look like it rides lower. But just a big step up from what I had, something I've always wanted. Check out the way that this billet swing arm is cut. It reminds me of an Art Deco styling, Deco locomotive styling, billet aluminum chrome performance machine, four piston differential bore caliper. Just a really, really nice upgrade to the back of my soft tail, ready to put it all together. Okay, here's a moment I've been waiting almost 30 minutes for. I've got the swing arm ready to go up in the bike. I gotta loosen these two bolts and uh, pull this swing arm pivot axle out so I can get the belt uh, around this axle. Um, that's important for me to do when I put it in there so that I can have the belt right inside the swing arm. But um, I'm at the point where I'm ready to get this thing hung up in there. And uh, you know, I, a long time, a lot of years, I never thought I'd own one of these. I didn't even think I'd own a soft tail for a long time because I like riding hard tail so much, but I fell in love with this bad boy. Now I've got a soft tail. I'm like, well, I'm gonna grab the parts I want uh, from the 90s for it that I can find. And a couple other parts I'm in the hunt for right now, but this is definitely the one thing that I always, always, always wanted and now I've got it. 
Got the shock mount bolts back into the swing arm. And the swing arm is perfectly coupled to the suspension now and to the frame. Might as well represent my cool hand speed co while I got this thing apart. All right, well, I'm at that point now where I'm ready to go ahead and get this wheel up in the bike, get everything in it, and see how everything fits, how everything works. You know, things seldom go according to plan. I think we've already established that. So I'm going to look and see how, according to my plan, this goes. I expect to have to make some modifications, do something, but I'm going to get it all up in here and see what's happening. So this time, because I'm setting this up in the bike and not just on the workbench, I'm using a 3 8 drive socket extension. And I just shove it down the middle here. That holds everything kind of together um, because there's a little bit of trickiness to getting all this lined up in here in the bike. Different in the bike than it is on the bench. You know, you wouldn't think so, but it really, really is. So um, this is a trick I use here. I usually use a punch on the, on the bench because it's longer. This is a little shorter, but it allows me to to get everything in the bike and make sure everything's working. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down. Yep, as expected, I've run into a couple of hiccups here. Um, one of them is that as I get everything spaced out, the wheel wasn't centered in the fender. Uh, and in the bike, this swing arm is a little different than a stock swing arm, so I had to actually move everything over about 200 thousandths of an inch. Then this is my my pin right here. It is my brake anchor. And as you can see, it's not really long enough to catch my brake caliper. So when my braking force pushes down on it, it's gonna wind up pushing the wheel over and sliding. So I gotta make that pin longer. That's part of my problem. And then, you know, over here on the other side, same thing. Uh, the axles, the axle that was in it is gonna be too short. So I'm gonna to have to take this longer axle and cut it down and make it work so that um, everything is just the right length. But I'm on the home stretch. I'm getting it, getting it done. It's real cool to see this come together. It's cool for me. Um, a lot of you probably never even seen one of these swing arms. A lot of people don't even know Boyd was making stuff for Harleys because he'd been out of the game for so long. But you know, Jesse James used to work in Boyd's shop and you know he was working in that shop at the time that this stuff was made. He might've made these, I'm gonna call him and ask him, but. Really cool stuff from the 90s. I'm able to stick on a mid 90s, 1995 Harley Davidson bad boy. I'm getting ready to cut the axle for this thing. This is kind of really my last move to get this thing ready to be on the road. I marked it in the bike with a Sharpie where I need to cut it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it, machine it in the lathe, do a little bit of welding and have this thing done. Cut the length. Here's a quick plan on getting this axle done. I cut the axle short on this end in the cold saw. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this end down. I'm gonna hammer this nut onto that end, kind of like an interference fit. And then we go ahead and weld the two together and uh, have a really good solid bond on this end. It'll basically be like having a hex nut. Then I'll go ahead and use the nut that I have on the other end to secure it in the bike. I'm gonna go ahead and bevel the ends of the shaft. What that does is it gives me a deeper groove to weld in. to get more holding power from my weld. I'm gonna go ahead and bevel it into the shaft. I'm gonna cut a bevel into the nut. I sanded the coating off the top of my nut, cut the bevel in the lathe. I'm just gonna hammer it down over the end of the axle that I turned down in the lathe. So it's an interference fit right now. The threads 
of the nut, our tight interference fit against that part I just cut in the lathe, that'll give me a lot of extra holding power when I go ahead and weld this together. And on one end of the axle, the nut on the other. And that's how I real quick made an axle that works the perfect length I need for this bike. This is the nut for the axle. Way too thick for my liking, so I'm gonna go ahead and choke it out of the chuck here. Chuck it out, I'm gonna cut a bunch of meat off of it and make it a thinner nut just so it doesn't stick out so far past the end of the swing arm. There you go, so I cut a quarter inch off of that nut, which is gonna be a lot hanging off the rear end of that swing arm because there's actually covers go on the end of that swing arm that I don't have and I will be making in a future video for you. But so now I cut the nut, I'm gonna go ahead and bevel this outside edge real quick, show you how I do that and then get this rig ready to go back into the bike. On the lathe, this is called my compound rest. It's called a compound rest because you can do a lot with it. You can move it in compound direction away. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set an angle that's gonna allow me to cut a nice bevel across the face of this nut and I'm gonna roll the lathe the opposite direction I normally spin it. Normally it spins counterclockwise the way we're looking at it. But I'm gonna spin the lathe clockwise so that the part is coming down into my cutter and cut a bevel across the front edge of that face. Check this out. You can see the bevel cut on that nut I just did in the lathe. I'll take it out of the chuck, clean it up on the belt sander, and it'll be a little more prominent. There's that nut. You can see a little bevel cut on the outside of it. It's not a big deal, but it looks a lot different without it. And it just kind of looks like a better finished product with that little bevel cut on there. No one's ever going to see it because it's going to have a cover on it, but I know what's there. Now you know what's there, so we did a good job. Here's what I'm going to do on the end of the axle. I cut a nice groove in there in the lathe, both in the end of the axle and the nuts. I've got a real nice deep V to get really good deep penetration for good holding power for this axle because I don't want the nut to spin off. I don't want the axle to be able to break out and push its way through one side of the bike and lose my rear axle. So um, I've got a deep V cut there. I'm going to come in with the TIG torch and with the torch I'm going to Cut a real deep puddle first and really get it cooked together, just fusion welding. Then as I get that fusion weld to solidify, I'm going to come back over with a TIG rod and fill it and add more material to it so I have more strength. Every time I think I'm on the home stretch, I'm not, but I, I am now. I've got the swing arm in the bike, I've got the wheel in, I got the wheel all spaced out just right in the bike. I got the axle cut and made. All I need to do now is I need to lower the bike down so that I can check the belt tension because the belt tension is different as the swing arm moves. So I'm gonna check the belt tension on the on the bike and then I can adjust the axle, tighten the axle up, and get this thing ready to run. A little more. The way this swing arm rides seems to ride a little bit higher than the factory swing arm does, but I have a lower, just a lowering kit on it, so it's not a big deal. But I'm gonna have to check and see if I have to do that. So this is where it's gonna ride if I don't lower it anymore. It's probably a little higher than where, where I like it. But I'm gonna go ahead and set it up now. I can always go ahead and pop the shock links off and go back and adjust the ride height on it later. But I'm gonna go ahead and set my belt tension, get everything, get the wheel lined up in the bike, Get everything buttoned down and tightened up and put the brake on, on, bleed the brake, get it really ready so I can ride home today from work. Because this is my daily rider right here. This is how I get around town. Um, you know, I only drive my truck when I gotta pick something up I can't carry on the bike. So everyday riding for me, this is it. I'm gonna go ahead and get this brake hose hooked up. It's the really the last step here to getting this bike ready to roll. Uh, I've got everything else done. I mean I'm really happy with the way it fits in the bike. I'm happy with the way it looks. 
I'm probably gonna wanna lower the bike some more. That's something I'm gonna need to do. But, but as far as everything else goes, I'm gonna go ahead and get this brake hose on, bleed it, and put the pipe back on. And I can go ahead and lower it whenever I want to. But I'm just stoked to get it on the road and ride it. She's going back together. I'm getting ready to hang the exhaust. I'm gonna fix a couple small things that I noticed while I was working on the bike. Take her off the list and go out for a ride because it's nice and sunny outside right now. There she is, folks. Got the Boyd Coddington Build Aluminum Swing Arm on the 1995 Harley Davidson Bad Boy. The eye instantly notices a difference between these parts and the stock parts. Black anodized Build Aluminum Rear Wheel. Contrast cut rotor. Performance machine brake. I used the BDL pulley. Black can definitely be overdone, so I use a little bit of a mix between polished and black. Little interesting note for you here. When I build a custom chopper, I always ride them a lot and end up changing things on them as I'm riding them, uh, switching parts out, scratching things, so things don't fit. And so I always end up having saved parts from some of the bikes I've worked on. And this axle spacer is one of those parts. This axle spacer is off of a bike I built for my buddy Booster. They call that bike Attempted Suicide. And it was on the cover of Easy Rider magazine, I think in 2002, you know, 20 years ago. It just really coincidentally matches the piping on this Harley Davidson leather bag and the pinstriping on the bad boy scallops on the paint. And so I just thought it was really, really cool that that is a very similar color to what I'm using. And I had it laying around for all these years, for you know, 18, 20 years since it's been off the original bike. I put it on here and then most people will never notice it. But for me, another one of those sentimental things to really remind me of where I've come from. You know, a little bit about me, about the Harley Davidson Bad Boy and the Boyd Coddington Swing Arm. This is a bike that I couldn't afford in 1995 when it came out. I wanted one so bad, my cousin Michael got a brand new one. Uh, another friend of ours had a Harley Davidson soft tail Springer that I just loved. I did a bunch of work to it, but I couldn't afford it. My brother and I were forced to ride pan heads and knucklehead choppers, rigid frame choppers, because that's all we could afford. You're talking about Miami 1995 at the height of the cocaine cowboys the cocaine wars down there a lot of the guys we were doing work for that's the business they were in and they could afford a three thousand dollar swing arm and they could afford all the parts that we can afford on our bikes so they were paying us to do the work but my brother and I couldn't afford to do this stuff ourselves we were riding pans and knuckles now these days a bike like this is very affordable and panheads and knuckleheads are starting to become untouchable especially knuckleheads so it's just something really special and sentimental to me because this is the bike that I wanted so bad back in those days. In 1995, I was just getting ready to graduate college. Uh, this bike was built in uh, September 1994, so I was about a year away from graduating when this bike was built. But I had no idea I'd be in this business long term like I am. I never had any idea I'd have the trajectory I had in this industry. So working on bikes like this, working with parts like this is really sentimental to me because it takes me back to those days when I was just getting started. It wasn't really until about 1996 that I got really serious about this as work. I, I didn't, I graduated college in 95 and just decided to take this seriously. In 96, I got serious about my parts business and it really, really started to take off long before any of you guys knew my name. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you because that's why this bike is so special to me. I know it doesn't look like that special of a motorcycle. It is really, really cool, but you know, it's not, on the level of most of the custom bikes I do and, and the choppers that I ride, but this is something that is really special to me because of those reasons.